Hello again. As you know, I'm Eli the Computer Guy over here for Everyman IT, and today's class is Physical, Operational, and Environmental Security. So these are three concepts in security that go together very well. So we're going to talk about physical security. So physical security is things like, do you have doors on the server room? Do you have locks on the server room? Do you have cables that secure your workstations to the desks that they are by? Basically, how hard is it for somebody to just to come in your building, pick up your systems, and, and walk out the door with it? Are they physically secure to the building somehow? We're going to talk about operational security. So operational security is who has access to what. So who is allowed in the server room? Uh, just because you, you have a lock on the door, you know, if you open the door up for any anybody who comes off the street, that doesn't really help anything. So operational security is who has access to what? Who knows what? You know, who knows what server does uh, does what 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 stuff. And then finally we're going to be talking about uh, what I loosely term as environmental security. Since we're already talking about physical security anyway, we're going to talk about what are the environmental conditions that you're putting your systems into? Uh, servers and systems should be put into rooms uh, that are within a certain range of temperatures. So your systems should be in rooms that are at least 50 degrees and that are under 80 degrees uh, because if they're any hotter or any colder, you could be causing damage to your systems. We'll be talking about how dusty and dirty the environment is. You know, the more dust and dirt in the environment, the more that it goes in and clogs up the systems and can cause downtime. So the, what we're going to be talking about again is operational security, physical security, and environmental security. Uh, the reason we're talking about it in one class is they just they just go together uh, uh, very well. So uh, so give me a second and we're going to dive into this class. So the first thing that we need to talk about is physical security. So how do you physically secure your servers, your equipment, your workstations, etc.? Um, you know, as I say in these security courses, everybody is always worried about hackers. Everybody is worried about malware and viruses and all that kind of stuff. I have had numerous clients. Uh, have horrible times because some crackhead broke in off the street and, and stole their systems, stole their computers. Uh, again, they may not be, that crackhead may not be interested in selling your data. Uh, they're, just, they're just looking to, to sell that computer for 25 bucks for their next fix. Uh, but that problem is what that computer that they're trying to sell uh, to a pawn shop for $25 uh, to you may be worth thousands upon thousands upon thousands of dollars. It may be hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, worth the value in that system, you know, they're just trying to, you know, get a crack fix or a, uh, get a burger at McDonald's. So you have to be worried about how your systems are physically secured. Now, the first thing that I always talk about, every business should have is a server room. So, uh, you know, the server room is where all of your primary uh, communications gear should be stored. So it should be the server, it should be the telephone system. If you have a digital surveillance system, that's where that should be stored. Basically, all these main systems should be stored in a room. Now, if it's me, I like a room that's at least five by five. You can put a nice little server rack in there, but it doesn't have to be a full-fledged, you know, server room uh, like you think about. Um, uh, I have had you know people who use closets, so you know they have a have a big closet. It might be like three by two feet deep, and they have a few servers. That is big enough uh, to have as a server room. The main thing that you want with a server room is you want enough room to be able to work. Be careful with this uh, because, like I say, uh, you know people try to try to make their, their server rooms too small. And the fact is, if you don't have enough room to work in there, then you may cause problems when you go in to do repairs. If everything is just crunched together really tight, when you go to pull out a server to work on it, you may accidentally mess something up uh, with the other servers. So you want it to be big enough uh, that you have a little bit of room to work in. The other thing is that you need to be able to lock the door. The door needs a real lock. Um, again, this is a big thing. You know, if you just throw it in a closet uh, and there's no locks on it, again, if somebody breaks in off the street, goes through, all they're looking for is computers. All they're looking for is something that they can sell quickly. They don't care 
whether you know they they don't care or they don't know whether it's a high-end workstation uh, for video games or whether it's a server they're just gonna come in they're gonna grab what they see what they think is gonna be valuable and they're going to go so if you have that door unlocked it's 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 just a bad thing so make sure that you can physically lock the door again we'll talk about in the environmental security section uh, in that server room, you also need to make sure that you have enough ventilation. Uh, so most, most of these little server rooms and closets, it's fine to simply have a metal grating on the door. So you just want a small metal grating that it will allow circulation in and out of that server room. Because remember, if you have any more than one computers, in one of these little little closets, it's going to get warm. If you have four or five computers running 24 hours a day, they produce a significant amount of heat, and you will start having heat problems if you don't have somewhere to, some way to ventilate the system. Again, we'll talk about in the environmental security, but the best thing is to actually have a little air conditioning duct that goes straight into the room. If you don't have that, a lot of times, simply having a vent uh, will, will work out for you. Now, again, you know, everybody thinks server rooms and think closets and they, oh, the people don't have enough room, you know, etc. Well, something that you can think about, you know, a good makeshift uh, server room are the server cabinets. So you can go out and anywhere between $300 to $1,000, you can buy a server cabinet cabinet so this is a this is a, so that you can put rack mounted uh, servers into it so it's basically a cabinet anywhere between about four feet to about eight feet tall um, you know it's big it's metal you can put put rack mounted servers in it but you can put normal servers in it too the main thing with these is you can get these server racks with side walls and with front and back doors that have locks on them so if you're not willing or your client is not willing uh, to, to, to take the room for a server room or doesn't have a place to put a server room you can buy one of these cabinets for about a thousand dollars like I say they are all steel uh, they have locks on both sides of it and, and basically they're very secure they're about as secure as a server room would be the only thing that you have to worry about if you're using cabinets is remember computers uh, can put off a lot of noise so depending upon what servers you shove in that cabinet uh, it may be very loud if you have to sit beside it. Uh, like I say, if you if you look at like one U servers, the one U servers we use uh, to present these video classes to you, they sound like vacuum cleaners on crack. I mean, they're just what? So it's something to think about. But these these cabinets can be a very useful uh, thing, you know, to have instead of a, a server room if 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 you don't mind the noise or if it's it's uh, quiet enough. Beyond the big server cabinets that they have. Many of these companies that build uh, server cabinets have also come up with new smaller ideas. So I've seen wall-mounted uh, server, uh, I don't know what the hell, they're, 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 they're like, uh, like the trundle beds that come down, but basically you're, you secure the metal box to the wall and then you secure the server inside the metal box and then you can lock uh, the server into that metal box. So those are the types of things that you need to think about with physical security. With, with, like I say, is either have a server room or have a cabinet. Now the next thing is, is, is remember, you may not think about it, you know, that $10 uh, an hour assistant, you don't really think that what she does is that valuable. Probably is valuable, but you know we, we all we, we all disregard uh, you know a lot of a lot of the employees. Well, what happens if somebody comes in and steals their computer? You know, if this is the receptionist, if this is the secretary, well, if it's anybody, you know, if somebody comes in and just is able to steal that person's computer, that may be a lot of downtime and, and lost money. So the computer itself, you go, Eli, who cares about that computer? It's a $400 Dell computer that I bought four years ago. It's worthless. Hey, anybody can come in and steal it. I don't care. Well, if it, somebody actually does come in and steal it, you have to think about the downtime for the assistant. You have to think about the work that they would be doing. What is the profitable work they could be doing uh, while they're waiting for the new computer? Then you have to buy the new computer, then you have to set up the new computer, etc. So even the, the, these cheap, crappy, old computers that, you, that employees are using actually have a value that is probably far higher than you realize. So you don't want these computers uh, just to be stolen if somebody breaks in. The easiest thing to do is they do have little computer locks like bicycle locks. Uh, so it's like a lock and chain mechanism where they have like a carbonite cable 
That goes through a little hole uh, that is on the back of your desktop computer and then you can secure that computer to the desk uh, where it's sitting. This is something that you should really think about. Remember, when people break in uh, to a building, they want to generally get in and out as quickly as possible. So if they go in and all the computers are locked down, well, then maybe they'll steal your fax machine or something. Basically, uh, you know, all of your data, all everything uh, that, that makes your business run is going to be on those computers. So again, if one of those computers gets stolen, it's bad. The harder you can make it uh, for somebody to try to steal the computers, the less likely that they are to steal the computers. So again, even something like these little carbonite locks uh, for the desktop systems uh, can be very, very valuable. So these are the things that you should look at with physical security. Again, you know, have a server room. You should have a server room where all of your equipment is. You know, this should be your server, your telephone system, your router, your switches, uh, etc. Again, with physical security security if you're dealing with a larger environment. So we had the class uh, on infrastructure where we talked about MDFs, main distribution facilities, and IDFs, intermediary uh, distribution facilities. If you have IDFs in your building, those should be physically secured. So if you have a place, so, you, so normally you know you have your server room and all the cables go back to the server room, well sometimes you have switches out you know, in the building. So, so this office space here, everybody connects back to this one switch and then there's a cable from that switch back to your server room. That switch should be secured. People should not just be able to touch it. You know, basically employees should not be able to just come up and, 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 and poke on any piece of equipment. That's a bad thing. So if you have these switches, if you have servers in other part of the building, those should be secured too. Again, whether it's in their own little broom closet or their own little server room type environment or whether it isn't in a cabinet. You do not want anybody who is not authorized to be able to touch your infrastructure equipment. Infrastructure again is switches, routers, servers, telephone system. Nobody should be able to physically put their hands on one of those devices unless they are authorized to do it. So these are the big things to think about with physical security. Again, not just locks on doors, not just doors, not just server rooms. You can think about server cabinets. You can think about these wall mounted cabinet things. Um, those are the things that you should be worried about with physical security. So now we need to talk about operational security. So physical security is physically securing the devices and the equipment. You know, the, the servers are behind a locked door. They are physically secure. Now the question is, is who has access to that server room. Because here's a problem, and I see it a lot in the business world, is you know, they, they build the server rooms, they have these steel doors. I mean, it's, it's impregnable, you know, you need to have a jackhammer to get in. But then anybody can literally walk off the street, go up to the secretary and go, oh, hi, I'm a computer repair guy, um, I need to get into your server room. And she'll go, oh, sure walk over to the server room, unlock the door, and, and let people in. This has been a huge problem in the technology world. People walk in with uniforms uh, to make them look like they should be technology professionals. They go, hello, I am with Verizon, I'm with Bell Atlantic, I'm with Eli the computer guy, I'm with whoever. Uh, I understand you have a computer problem, I need to go look at your servers. They go in, they see your servers, when the secretary leaves, they start pulling stuff out of the rack, shoving it in their toolkit and walking out the door. This really is not a joke. I know you're thinking, you know, servers, nobody's going to take a huge server and walk out the door with it. But with a lot of the more expensive systems, not only do you have the, the server uh, that's not going to be stolen, but you have things like cards. I've talked about before uh, when I used to deal with uh, the telephone systems that the telephone systems that I dealt with, they had cards about this big, you know, they looked like really big PCI cards, basically PCI cards that were 10 times the size. Each one of those cards was worth up to $30,000. So back in the, the late 90s, early uh, 2000s, there was a big rash of problems where people walked in, uh, they looked like telephone repair people, they would go into the telephone closet, you know, they say thank you, they would yank out these cards, throw them into their toolkit, walk out the door. By the time anybody realized that there was a problem, it was too late, they were gone. You know, because they start yanking out the cards, people go, oh, what's wrong with the telephone system? The secretary says, hey, oh, somebody's working on the telephone system. It should be fixed in a little bit. 
And so, you know, again, by the time anybody knows what's going on, uh, the people are gone. So with operational security, you need to be worried about who has access uh, to what systems. And so you need to come up with a procedure for this. Uh, basically, um, there should be at any one time, uh, whoever is in the building, you should have at least one person that logically understands how all of the systems work and what the systems are. This does not mean that these people need to understand TCP IP. It does not need, mean they need to understand SIP or routing protocols, etc. But at any one time in the building, in the office, you should have somebody that understands this box is the telephone system. This box is our email server. This box is our Active Directory server. This box is our router. There should be somebody in the building that understands those things. Again, just, just conceptually. So if somebody comes in to say they're going to be fixing things, um, that A, they can point them in the right direction, and B, they can see if something is fishy. I've seen this a lot, like I say, with, uh, with businesses. Nobody has any idea of what's going on. Um, and so, and so that, that, that's, that's a really bad thing. With this and with the people, uh, the, the, these, who, you know, whoever is in the office that understands what's going on, they should also understand who is authorized uh, to touch what equipment. So if the, your, your company uh, has you know, a maintenance contract with an outside IT vendor, whoever is on duty or whoever is there should know who that vendor is and should have an idea of who would be coming in uh, to repair systems. So, so again, if somebody comes to repair a system uh, and you have somebody that understands what's going on, they may say, no, all of our systems are working right. We didn't make a call to have you come in. Let me call your boss before I let you go any further. Th this is a huge thing. Who has access to what systems and then making sure um, Again, that, that somebody is there that logically understands uh, what is going on. Beyond that, finally, uh, you should have point of contacts for everything. So, uh, you know, if the, if the secretary is there and she doesn't know what's going on, she should have a list of phone numbers of who can be called if there is a problem or if somebody comes in to repair stuff. So if somebody walks in the door and says, hi, I'm here to fix a telephone system, that person can go, hold on a second, let me call the point of contact to make sure that you should touch the telephone system. You know, they can call that list of point of contact, say, hey, I have a telephone guy here, Do, should they be here? Uh, yes or no. This is a big thing. Then, with operational security, as you should have one person at the site at all times that understands logically what is going on, not everybody should understand what is going on. Remember, your biggest threat, sadly, your biggest threat to your infrastructure is not hackers. It is not virus. It's not malware. And although I love to laugh at them, it's not crackheads trying to break in off the street. The biggest threat to your infrastructure are the people that are in your building already. Your bosses, your employees, your partners, etc. These are the people that are most likely to cause you the most amount of damage. So everybody in the world should not understand how all of the systems work. This is just a good safety precaution. Remember, um, you know, you may need to fire somebody. Uh, people may just be having a really bad day. People go nuts. That type of thing. You don't want everybody in the world to understand where your main servers are. So if they're having a bad hair day, they go in and they, they kick the main server. Or, or again, you know, I talked about the crack, crackhead coming off the street uh, that just is going to steal anything. Well, that employee may know exactly uh, what server to steal to crash the business, and they can pick up that server and walk out the door. This is very important, especially in the more competitive businesses. Uh, there are a lot of businesses out there that are very, very, very competitive about things like trade secrets and clients. And these are not necessarily huge businesses. These are not necessarily $100 million businesses. I dealt with, with small, multi-million dollar businesses where client contacts and trade secrets were incredibly valuable. So if you, if you got an employee that was irate and they walked in and they stole the server with all that information on it and walked out the door to the competition, that could be a huge, huge 
problem. So the main thing that you want to remember with operational security is, is you have to have a core of people that, that understand logically how the system works and what should be going on. Uh, they should then understand who should have access to systems and who should not have access to systems. Who is allowed to take a computer out of the building if it needs to repair, be repaired? Can anybody off the street simply walk into the business and say, hey, I'm going to repair that computer, pick it up and leave? You, sh you should know who is allowed to pick up computers, servers, etc., and take them out of the building. Uh, if somebody is not there, there should be a point of contact list uh, for your infrastructure, for your computer systems. So if somebody is not there that doesn't understand what's going on, if a telephone repair person comes in, if a computer repair person comes in, etc., the assistant can call that point of contact and say, hey, this guy is trying to take a server out of the building. Is that okay? Yes or no, this is an important thing. Then, you know, beyond having people that logically understand what's going on, besides having access control, all of that, then also remember that not everybody in the business needs to know what's going on. Not everybody needs to know what servers do what. Again, the person that is most likely to cause your business damage is the one that is already inside the building. So if all your employees know all your servers and exactly what you do, you have a risk that one day they're going to come in and they're just going to kick the server or they're going to rip crap out and it's just going to be bad. So those are the things that you need to think about with operational security. So now we need to talk about environmental security. So we talked about the physical security, so putting the computers behind a locked door, locking the computers uh, to a desk. We talked about operational security. Who is allowed to take a computer out of the building? Who is allowed to access the server room and get in there with all the equipment? Now the environmental security is the actual environment that these systems are going to be running in. Remember, uh, systems are not as fragile as they used to be. Um, but they're still not rocks, they're still not bricks. Uh, dirt and dust and heat can still do tremendous damage to the systems, and when the systems go down, uh, you have downtime. So the first thing that you need to look at, you know, where systems are located, where especially things like the servers, uh, the switches, all of that are, is how dirty or how dusty is it? These computers should be in relatively clean environments. If they are not in clean environments, then you need to come up with a schedule to routinely clean computers. So if you have a computer you know, in a normal office environment, you may need to open it up and dust it out with a can of air every year or two, really. I mean, you need to do it every once in a while, but it's, it's, it's honestly not a priority. Well. If you are in a dirty environment, let's say you're in a construction environment or a farm environment, et cetera, you are going to need to crack those systems open and clean them out probably every three to six months. So instead of just being something that you do when you have a little bit of extra time, you do need to now actually sit down and come up with a plan for how often it is going to be done. So again, you know, like I say, with, with most of the office clients I had, you know, if their computer died, if there was a virus, Eh, while I was fixing the virus, I would clean it out. You know, there was no schedule to it. Well, again, if you are in a dirty, dusty environment, you need to have a schedule. Every three months, um, every six months, go in there and, and dust all the stuff out. The next thing is, is your systems need to operate within a, a, a band of temperatures. So. It should be at least 50 degrees uh, wherever your servers are. You know, some people say it should be 60. I say 50. You, you make your decision. It should not be freezing, whatever it is. You know, it should be, you know, 50 or 60 degrees to about 80 degrees. If it's any cooler than 50 or 60 degrees, you may have mechanical problems because Remember, um, there are arms, there's things that move inside these computers, you know, fans, uh, little, uh, little actuator arms on the hard drives, etc. So if those get too cold, mechanically they start having problems. The grease, the lubrication does not work properly and, you know, it, it doesn't work properly. You know, it keeps running day in, day out. This starts causing problems which will cause the server to crash or the system to die at some point. You don't want it above 
80 degrees because 80 degrees is where computers can start having problems with the ambient air. Remember, the, the biggest uh, menace to computers is heat. If your computers or if your systems get too hot, they will either automatically shut down. So a lot of these systems, in order to, to prevent themselves from getting damaged, once they get above a certain temperature, they automatically shut down. Or if they're allowed to get above that temperature, the little bits inside them will literally melt and destroy themselves. Um, so you know when you're looking at a CPU, there's millions and millions and millions of these things called transistors on that CPU. If that CPU gets too hot, they literally just start melting into a little puddle on that CPU and, and therefore the, the computer crashes. So you don't want the temperature uh, in your server room or where these computers are to be lower than 50 or above 80. This is very, uh, very important. If, if you allow it to be above that, above or below, just realize the life expectancy of your systems are going to go way down. Uh, you know, this is a big problem I had with clients because they would put a computer into an 80 degree room or a 90 degree room and they would say, hey, look, it's been working fine for two days. Eli, you don't know what you're talking about. Well, it worked fine for two days, it worked fine for six months, and in nine months, the thing killed itself and died. That's a thing. A server should run five or six years. You put it into a bad environment, it will continue running for a while, but after a while, uh, it, it, will, it will kill itself. The next thing uh, you need to think about with environmental security is the neatness of your equipment. How neat is the cabling? If I walk into a server room, can I very easily unplug a server from the network uh, that I need to unplug? So, uh, so if I need to switch some cables in the patch panel, how easy it is, is it to figure out where, you know, which cable goes to what? This can be a huge problem, especially once you start getting into environments where you have two or three hundred computers, you go in and you have a big patch panel in front of you, you need to make sure you're not unplugging a system when you try to plug a new system in. Um, you know, if cables are all over the place, uh, this can be a complete mess. Again, uh, this is with, uh, with power cables, this can be a huge problem. When you go to unplug the power from a server, are you sure uh, that the, the, the plug you're pulling out is for the right server? If you're trying to unplug the surveillance server and you unplug the Active Directory server, that can be a very bad thing. So neatness really is a big deal. A lot of people don't think about it enough, but, but remember, you can cause, you know, as I said, uh, the greatest threat is already in the building. The technician can cause as much damage as anybody else by accidentally unplugging things uh, that, that he, he, he shouldn't unplug. So so, so, so neatness, the how neat is the cabling, how neat are all the computers set up, uh, et cetera. And the final thing with environmental security is to get rid of old crap, get rid of old systems. You don't know how many businesses that I walk into where they have a line of servers set up and they only use two of them, but there's still four others that are powered on that are functioning, that are buzzing along doing something, um, but, but nobody has any idea what those systems are doing. Make sure when a system is taken offline that you actually pull the system out of the server room and you put it somewhere. You know, it can be safe, it can be secure for you to use some other time. But make it so if a technician walks into the server room, they are not confused about what does what. You know, if you walk in and you see two servers, then you can go, okay, this is probably the Active Directory server and this is another server, and then you can go about your business. If you walk into an environment and they have 10 servers, well, then you're scratching your head and you're like, well, I think this is the Active Directory server. Well, but this one might be. And uh, is that the email server or is that the antivirus server? This can be, like I say, a huge problem. Not only uh, is it the problem for when the technician comes in to do the repairs, but when technicians are trying to bring stuff offline, if they're trying to bring stuff, uh, computers, out of that server room long after they've been used, there may be old stuff that those servers are still doing uh, that they didn't realize that they were doing. So let's say at one time you had an Active Directory server that was doing all the security policies uh, for the entire network, and it was an email server, and it was the, the antivirus you know, hub server. 
Well, they may have stopped using it for the Active Directory server, they may have stopped using it for the email server, but it may still be the focal point for the antivirus updates. So, being a technician coming in, pulling that server out, I think I'm doing a good job, you know, trying to clean up the system. And at this point, you don't realize that is the server uh, that all those other computers point back to uh, for antivirus. So with the environmental security, again, this is a huge thing. It's probably, you know, more important uh, than, than a lot of the other stuff, even though it's, it seems kind of simple, is your systems need to be in a clean, dust-free environment. Systems need to operate in temperatures between 50 to 80 degrees. Things need to be neat uh, and orderly. You know, cabling needs to be neat and orderly. Uh, power plugs need to be neat and orderly. You need to pull out old systems. Make sure, especially like I say, in the server room, um, that you only have computers that are actually doing something. It's, this is very important. The same is true then, uh, you know, when I'm talking about server rooms or MDFs, the main distribution facilities, the same is true of your IDFs, your intermediate distribution facilities. Make sure they are clean. Make sure they are dust free. Um, make sure, you know, that is neat and orderly. A lot of times I've seen with businesses, you know, they, they decide that one room will have 20 people. They just run cables back to a switch and then they, they just toss the switch in a corner. You know, it's just sitting, you know, under a pile of God knows what, sucking in dust, sucking in crap, etc. Well, if that one switch goes down, that means 20 computers will no longer be able to con uh, connect to the network. So now it's not just one person that has downtime, that would be 20 people that have downtime. So again, make sure with this clean and, and neat and all that, it's not just your server room, it's not just your MDF, your main distribution facility, it is also your IP. IDF. It is also where all of these these other computers are located. You know, make sure people go out and vacuum every once in a while. Uh, this this stuff can be very important. So that was a class on physical, operational, and environmental security. Uh, nothing I talked about in this class is very complicated. Uh, this is all very easy stuff, but it's all stuff that if you do not plan for, can cause horrible, tremendous amounts of damage uh, to your systems, to your infrastructure. As I talk about in this security class, uh, the security track, everybody's worried about hackers and viruses and all that kind of stuff. I'm telling you, what brings down most systems has nothing to do with hackers in China. Uh, dust, dirt, uh, that kind of stuff brings down far more systems uh, than, than hackers do. So we talked about physical security. Like I say, your server, your primary systems should be in a server room that has a locked door. It should be difficult to be able to get into that server room. If you cannot have a server room, look at buying one of these, uh, these server cabinets. Like I say, you can, you can just order them online and get it shipped to you. It's a cabinet. Uh, you know, we, ha we have one. It's about... Uh, I don't know, was that three or four feet deep? It's about two and a half feet wide, and you know, they're anywhere between four to 10 feet tall. The nice thing with these server cabinets is you can get them with metal sides, metal tops, and metal front and back doors. So essentially, it's just a portable server room. I mean, they're, they're steel, they, they weigh like 300 pounds, plus you put a couple of servers in there, nobody is picking these, these things up and walking away from it. But one of those little server cabinets, it can give you a secure environment to store your systems. And, you know, as I talked about with the environmental stuff, it's also a way of keeping all your systems nice and neat and orderly. So you can plug a little patch panel into the, the server cabinet. You can put shelves in it so all your, your servers are, you know, you know, they're all nice, um, et cetera. Again, with your other systems. Everybody always worries about the servers. They worry about the telephone systems. They worry about the surveillance systems. They don't think enough about the simple workstations that are sitting around uh, in the office. And again, you, you know, the, the, one of the, the, the biggest things I, I try to cram into people's heads is everybody looks at some, again, $500 four-year-old computer and they go, that computer is worthless. The computer itself may be close to worthless, but the data that is stored on it can be worth tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars. The, the work 
that the employee does when they sit down to that computer per day may be worth anywhere between two hundred to a thousand dollars I mean remember you know if you're looking at an average fifteen dollar an hour employee they cost their employer a hundred and sixty dollars a day at least and that's for a fifteen dollar an hour employee when you start getting into the higher level employees they can easily cost the employer five hundred dollars a day for just sitting there twiddling their thumbs that is not even counting the lost revenue because they can't do their job so uh... so like i say those, those little four and five hundred dollar systems you may just think they are a joke they are not you know it's it's systems are about the data that is stored on them and about what the the person who sits down at them can do so you know like i say they have these little uh... basically they're, they're like bicycle chain locks you can lock the systems to the computer or to the desk I would suggest, strongly suggest, you think about doing that. You know, you don't have to do it with all the equipment. You know, maybe not the monitors, uh, maybe not the the fax machine. Because if somebody breaks in, remember, they're going to try to be getting equipment as quickly as possible. You know, this is going to be a crackhead. This is somebody that is going to be selling it for drugs, selling it for a fast buck, whatever. They are not looking for what is the server. They are not looking for you know that kind of stuff. They are looking what can I grab quickly and sell easily so so again if all your computers are locked and they try to try to drag them and they can't they will grab something else again you lose a little money on what they grab but they're not grabbing your data and you're there they're not grabbing all the, the, the this other stuff then we talked about operational security again this is another huge thing who is allowed to have access to what you really need to think about this uh, at any one time uh, while the business is, is, is during business hours you know whether you, you work eight hours a day or 24 hours a day one person in that business at and you know at any one time should have a logical idea of what goes on uh, with the systems in the business that person should be able to say that is a security computer that is the telephone system that is our router they should understand logically what's going on again they don't have to understand TCP IP and SIP and all that kind of garbage but they should know that is our small business server this here is our small business server this here is our file server somebody there should be able to understand that at any one time uh, if that person is away then there should be a point of contact list so somebody else can call and say hey the computer guy or the telephone guy is trying to take a system do I allow them to do that uh, this this like I say is very important finally you know I, I just talked about you should have people that logically understand what's going on not everybody should understand what's going on again the the most dangerous person in the world are the people that are already in your building again not just nefarious reasons but people trying to be helpful you don't know how many helpful people I saw crash their businesses network you know oh I'll just I'll just install this the, this fancy new tool onto the server and everything will be better this will be wonderful and it crashes the server and always everything goes down so whether it's for nefarious reasons whether it's people just trying to be nice sadly this happens a lot people not everybody needs to know what server does what or even where the systems are if you can keep those systems off in a corner of the building that nobody really knows exists uh, that that is a, is a good thing and then we talked about uh, environmental security again dust and dirt is a huge problem for these systems make sure these systems are in a clean environment again if they're not in a clean environment you know sometimes you've got to deal with construction sites and etc then come up with a cleaning schedule for these systems they need to get cleaned out we talked about temperature uh, above 50 below 80 again a lot of people think cold is better for computers and to a degree it is but remember there are physical mechanisms that run in these computers and these systems and if you get below 50 degrees those physical mechanisms start having problems so the electronic mechanisms uh, like warmth uh, or like the cold the physical me mechanisms don't like the cold again if you get above 80 degrees remember heat is the biggest enemy of your systems you get above 80 degrees 
Hopefully, you'll start having the problem uh, that your systems will automatically shut down because they read that the temperature is too high. Unfortunately, if they don't automatically shut down, uh, then they are going to start uh, just kind of melting, like the CPUs just really, really do melt. Then we talked about, like I say, neatness. Neatness is a huge, huge thing. If I walk into the server room, can I easily unplug cables uh, for, for servers? You know, if I want to take a server out, can I unplug the cable? Can I tell what cables go to what? Um, it's a really big thing. And then finally, just overall, getting rid of old crap in the building, old infrastructure crap. Whether it is old workstations, whether it is old servers, whether it is old routers, old switches. If it is not being used anymore, pull it out and then put it into a storage area. Just like you have a server room, don't put it, just show it, shove it in the server room. Have another storage area for these systems. So you pull it out of production and you put it in that storage area. From there, you know, you may refurbish it, give it to another employee, you may refurbish something, put it